This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon, again, because this is the fifth generation. I can't believe we have reviewed this five times now, and it gets better every time, which is hopefully what happens with any product, right, as it moves along. Intel's seventh generation KB Lake CPU is as thin and light as ever, yet surprisingly durable, and we have Thunderbolt 3 inside, too. So pretty exciting stuff here. It weighs 1.13 kilograms, or 2.5 pounds, and is just 16 millimeters thick at the thickest part. There's a lot to like here, except for the price. The price is kind of painful on this, though. Typically with the Lenovo's five months from now, it'll go down. I don't know if Lenovo appreciates me telling you that, but that usually is the way it rolls, but can you wait that long? I don't know. By the way, happy St. Paddy's Day, wearing green for Irish power. No, sorry, I am not Irish, though. I'm Scottish and Danish for those of you who've been wondering, but who doesn't love St. Paddy's Day? Anyway, let's look at it now. So here it is, the Katana Knife of Business Ultrabooks. You gotta say, even if you're not that much into the ThinkPad look, though I kinda do like the ThinkPad look, that that's pretty darn sleek looking, right? And it's, it's a timeless matte black, as always, with Lenovo. Very thin, very light. It may open to 180 degrees, but that doesn't mean that it does 360 degrees. It doesn't go farther than this. It doesn't even have a touch screen. The X1 Carbon is completely non-touch now with a matte display. We'll talk more about the display later. If you want the convertible thing, if you want the touch, if you want the pen, there's the ThinkPad X1 Yoga that we reviewed, and we'll be reviewing the upcoming generation too that's also refreshed with KB Lake. So what's new here? Well, the good news is we have a normal keyboard. Gone are the days when Lenovo used to mess with the keyboard, right? No strange little dynamic strip or anything like that. Really lovely as ever with Lenovo. Great tactile feel, nice travel. It's, it's fairly quiet keyboard. It's a dream to type on. It's backlit. Unless you're coming from like a four or five year old ThinkPad, the thicker ones that had even more key travel, you'll probably find this instantly familiar and very comfortable. If you are coming from one of, one of the really older ThinkPads, you'll notice the key travel is certainly short and it makes something this skinny, it has to be, but it's not terrible. It's certainly definitely a better keyboard than say the XPS 13 has, I think for most people who enjoy touch typing, and certainly the LG Gram, the Samsung Notebook 9, other thin and light ones. Trackpad right here, it's a Microsoft Precision Trackpad. Usually Lenovo goes with their own Synaptics drivers, very full featured drivers and stuff. This time they've done that, but there still are some Synaptics enhancements. It's a fine trackpad, except for the fact that it'll just suddenly stop taking input. It won't track this, it won't track taps, and then it'll come back again. And I find if I just go fiddle with the settings and then come back in, it works fine until I reboot again. So clearly they need a driver update for that. And that's unusual. It's probably because this is their first foray into the Microsoft Precision Trackpad, which is built by Synaptics. Nab point pointer, as always, for you traditionalists in the ThinkPad world with dedicated buttons up here. And we have the fingerprint scanner right over there. And now a word from our sponsor, Unity. When I checked this app out, I ended up actually really liking it. What is it? It's a media server for each one of your devices, Mac, Windows, iOS, Android. So no more having to figure out what video is on which device and transferring them all around, no using Dropbox, no worrying about security. Just install it on all of those devices and from any one of them, you can then access and look at photos, look at iTunes library, play videos, that sort of thing. Pretty neat. It's free if you use it on the same Wi-Fi network and if you want to use it remotely, you are going to have to pay a fee, but for home use, it is actually even free too. So be sure to check out the link in the description down below because they're giving away a set of Polk Audio speakers, pretty nice. That's if you sign up for a free Unity account, and you can also get a discount if you want the pay for version. So this is a dual core 15 watt Ultrabook. This is not a quad core workstation. Obviously uh, it's something this thin and this light's not gonna have four cores. You have Intel HD 620 graphics, Intel seventh generation KB Lake CPUs. We have the core i7-7600U, 2.8 gigahertz. That's a little bit fancier than the usual 7500U that you'll see in most Ultrabooks. And it's the only option right now that Lenovo lists on their website that I'm sure others are coming in the future. New for this model are two Thunderbolt 3 ports, not one, but two, and the charger plugs into one of them, and you can use either of them. That's the good news. I would assume that this is two PCIe lanes, which is true of just most all Ultrabooks. Only bigger gaming laptops and workstations have the full four lanes. It's just not enough room on the motherboard. Still, it's nice to have. I don't think a lot of people buy a ThinkPad and say I'm going to hook up a Razer Core and a GTX 1080 anyway, but for future Thunderbolt peripherals, for using Thunderbolt docks, a display out, You've got it all there. For legacy ports, we still have 
two USB 3.0 ports considerately, one on each side to suit right and left-handers, so that's good. The usual headphone combo mic jack. And there's a little proprietary port for the Ethernet dongle. It's interesting they didn't just go with Thunderbolt 3, but I guess they didn't want to use up one of those ports for Ethernet for you. And there's a full-size HDMI. So modern, pretty well equipped, just what we would expect. And on the back, under itsy bitsy little door, there's a little tray for a micro SD card slot, the kind of that you have to pop open with a paper clip, and the optional nano SIM card slot if you get the one with L, the X7 LTE A Qualcomm 4G modem inside. So RAM is soldered on board. It's not DDR4, it's DDR3 low power. I guess Lenovo is looking to try to conserve some energy here for their three cell battery. It's an ample capacity and all that sort of thing, but well, so order it with the amount of RAM that you want because you can't upgrade it afterwards. Ours has 16 gigs of RAM, so that's plenty enough for most people, certainly for an Ultrabook. If you're, if you're starting to see that you need more than that, you probably also need a quad core because you're doing some pretty serious heavy lifting stuff. I mean, really heavy lifting things. SSD, uh, ours has a 512 gig PCIe NVMe SSD. It's a Samsung made one. The standard configuration that's available on Lenovo's website in the US is a 256 gig NVMe SSD. And they list the option for slower SATA drives if you want to save some money or you want to upgrade it afterwards. Speeds indeed work quite good on the SSD. Nice performance there. And it's upgradable if you want to. Like I said, it's an M2 slot and we'll show you the internal so you can see everything that's going on inside. All right, to get inside is actually very easy. Nice Phillips head screws, big heads here. These are captive screws. That means you keep on screwing until you feel it kind of go click, 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 and the cover holds them in place so you won't lose them. Notice there's screws here, 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 but there are none in the front. There's nothing hidden under those feet. That's just the way it is. So when you unscrew it, it kind of starts to lift off from the back. It's really easy to take off. Thank you, Lenovo. That's one nice thing about ThinkPads. They intend them to be serviceable by individuals and corporations. So that's what the inside of the cover looks like. Nice carbon fiber stuff going on. All right, little ultrabook size fan right there with the heat sink pipe. And here we have the Wi Fi card Intel 8265AC with Bluetooth 4.2. This is the M2 SSD. You can get it with either SATA if you're going budget or PCIe NVMe. It should be the same motherboard. So if you want to upgrade a SATA one to NVMe later for faster. Storage, you can do that. RAM is soldered on board on this. As with most Ultrabooks, the battery takes up a whole lot of the space inside. And that's a 57 watt hour battery, which is a good size capacity. These days, we usually see in the 50s for a 13 to 14 inch Ultrabook. Now notice there's another connector over here. I suspect that's for the LTE-A option. We do have the SIM card holder here. I believe that's there no matter what, even if you don't get it with LTE-A, and that would be likely the socket for that. No antennas or anything running from there either. I don't know if in the United States that option will be available for 4G LTE. And lastly, the speakers are facing pretty much at the user. They're facing down but forward at the same time, which is a good idea. These are Dolby speakers, and boy, Lenovo actually gets pretty thick in full audio. These certainly sound better than the competing LG Gram 14 or the, the Samsung Notebook 9 13-inch with their anemic little speakers. Of course, they have a little bit more room and weight to work with here. The laptop will also be available in silver later. I'm not a big fan of ThinkPads in silver. I really like that matte black look, but for those of you who would like that, it's supposed to be coming. The display is a 1920 by 1080 full HD matte display, and you can see they've gotten rid of that kind of permanent screen protector overlay thing that made things look murky and icky. Now you just have a very thin bezel, how trendy that is, and a normal matte display, so very low glare. QHD IPS display, also matte non-touch, is supposed to be coming in June. I don't know why the delay, because Lenovo's been offering that kind of display for, you know, generations now at this point, but that's what they say. The display is actually pretty nice on this. You know, it used to be ThinkPads, because they were aimed towards business, had some sad displays in terms of color gamut and all that sort of thing. Well, Lenovo has been listening to our complaints, apparently, and this one is pretty vibrant and pretty rich looking. Subjectively, I enjoy looking at it. Wouldn't mind if it was a touchscreen, but again, there's the X1 Yoga for that. Whether you get the Full HD or the QHD, you're going to get 300 nits of brightness, and in fact, our colorimeter confirmed that. 
And color gamut's pretty good, just a few percentage points below the competition, with 94% of sRGB and 69% of Adobe RGB. Usually you see, we see almost 100% sRGB and 75% of Adobe RGB, so that's not bad. And you can see the rest of the information on screen. That, that the, the, the white balance point is terribly high, terribly high, but thank goodness calibration with the colorimeter fixes that and brings it back down so things don't look so pale blue-green, which is what happens if the color white point is too high on it. Contrast is actually a little better than average because the black levels are pretty nice on this. So overall, big thumbs up on the display, and I think 19 by 1080 is a perfectly reasonable resolution for a 14-inch display, and I run it at 100% scaling or no scaling, and I find it's just right, but I have fairly sharp eyes, at least with the help of my eyeglasses. What's not to like? Well, right now, fan noise. It, yeah. And I've used Task Manager, and I've dug through to see if anything is running rampant in the background. It's not. The fan, particularly when it's plugged in and charging, or just plugged into AC at all, often comes on and is really audible. Now, it's an Ultrabook with a small fan, so we're not talking about a vacuum cleaner here, but you'll hear it, and you'll be wondering, well, it's just sitting there on the desktop, and not a single program is running. What could be going on here? I would say that this is something that I hope Lenovo addresses with the BIOS update, because that's just kind of weird. Now, if you're doing something like playing games, you can see playing League of Legends here. In fact, for those of you who are wondering what kind of gaming you can do with an Ultrabook with integrated graphics, you can do Dota 2, you can do LOL, just fine. The, the fan is on, but the game audio is considerably louder, so you don't even notice it, actually, until you, you quit the game. So the only thing I'm complaining about is when the fan's on, and you're not really doing much of anything. What up with that? Those Dolby powered speakers, by the way, are pretty loud. I'm liking those a lot. And performance, it's an Ultrabook, it's a dual core, it has integrated graphics, which means for most folks it's probably plenty enough for everyday productivity. If you want to play serious games like Fallout 4, this isn't the kind of laptop for you, obviously. If you're doing 4K video editing day in and day out, uh, a dual-core Ultrabook is not the ideal choice. It's fine for recreational use and occasional use, and for 1080p editing, it's fine for Photoshop. It's good for, for most things like that. And in terms of benchmarks, it's, it's just where you would expect it among its competition. So battery life. The battery in these keeps getting bigger. It's 56 watt hour. That's a pretty ample sized battery for what we have inside here. It's three cells. And as you saw from our internals, it takes up a good deal of the interior space of the laptop. Now, Lenovo claims up to 15 hours of use, which is just, I don't know how you could possibly do that. That's madness. I'm finding I'm getting more like six to seven hours. Maybe if that fan calmed down, it would actually improve some. Uh, so it's okay. Like most very thin and very light laptops, though, battery life is not going to be off the charts, certainly there. Compact charger, again, it is a USB-C based charger this time around. And it's a pretty easy charger to carry around. Now, certainly if you went to great lengths to improve battery life, run it at 20% brightness, turn off your Wi-Fi, all that sort of thing. You could get longer than that. I'm just talking about average use, streaming some video, doing some work in Word and Excel, a little bit of WordPress, the, the everyday things that folks do, edit a few photos, nothing su super duper heavy lifting there, but not just sitting there with a Word web a Word page showing and not doing anything else either. So there it is, Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 5th generation for 2017. Their thin light ultrabook, boy thin, boy light, yes, 14 inches too, so you get a little bit more screen real estate than something like the Dell XPS 13 or the Samsung Notebook 9 13 inch. Uh, there's a lot to love here as ever. It's got a nice sturdy build, yet it's light. The keyboard is a dream. What do you expect from Lenovo? The display is, boy, Lenovo has done a good job of picking up quality on their displays. Even the base full HD model here is a very nice one. Like I said, the only thing is, oh man, is it expensive? Right now, there's only one configuration that they list on the US website, which is already out of stock, and that one's $1,900, which is configured just slightly below this one in terms of the amount of SSD storage. It's a well-configured machine, but there's a lot of money. By the way, if you would like a SmackDown with the Dell XPS 13, just shout out in the comments because there's certainly a lot of overlap, both being traditional laptops, no 360 degree hinges, no touchscreen option for this one, just like the base XPS 13. So in sum, what's good for it? What's this good for? It is good for those who are looking for something super thin and light with a slightly bigger screen than average, yet that's fairly durable. So if you like that LG Gram, if you like the Samsung Notebook 9, but the amount of flex that's designed in those to be even lighter than this, a half pound or more, are creepy out a little bit, or you just want, you know, you don't want to have to worry about this thing when you throw it in your bag, that's a big plus. You get a good display, you get a best-in-class keyboard here. 
and you get pretty good upgradability as ultrabooks go but not the ram but you know you get fast pcie nvme ssds those are the things to like about this and no bloatware too because this is a business oriented laptop so lenovo doesn't throw any junkware on there whatsoever what's not to like well obviously the price i'm not sure if you'll be able to get the lte option in the us or what countries will have it and won't have it yet ram is not upgradable the trackpad drivers are a little bit wonky but i'm sure they'll fix that the, the real thing that's bothering me though right now is the fan noise hopefully that'll be addressed in bios too battery life it's okay it's not stellar despite lenovo's claims I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.